Good evening. Tonight, I come to you not only as a citizen of Ghana, but also as a proud inhabitant of the continent of Africa. It pains me to see the outrageous xenophobic attacks that have ignited into a wildfire in South Africa. Although government officials from around the continent have spoken out and prodded the leadership of South Africa to act, little has been accomplished. In fact, it now appears that the solution that the South African government sees is one that feeds and encourages this xenophobic fervor which is sweeping this once progressively enlightened nation. South African security forces have now been ordered to root out and detain foreigners to cleanse the country of immigrants who have worked and resided there for years. The xenophobic attacks fostered by government forces and South African citizens alike have produced a movement of barbaric torture and murders of foreigners living and working in South Africa. In the beginning, news reports focused on Nigerians that were being targeted ignored the facts that among the immigrants are many Ghanaians who have crossed the South African borders to find gainful employment. Ghana's Foreign Affairs Ministry issued a statement, but not a solution or a plan to aid the Ghanaians who are under attack in South Africa. On September 5th, 2019, the ministry said, the government of Ghana wishes to assure the Ghanaian public that there are no confirmed Ghanaian casualties at the moment. Our High Commission in Pretoria is monitoring the situation closely and any new development will be communicated accordingly. That statement became false almost immediately when on the morning of September 6th, it was revealed that at least three and possibly five Ghanaians have been slaughtered in the xenophobic onslaught in South Africa. The African Union has offered little help in diffusing the situation, issuing statements and excuses while the crisis wrecks havoc on South Africa as it divides and destroys the goals of a united African continent. As the attacks continue, reprisals against South African citizens and businesses in nations throughout the continent are occurring. At a time when the unification of Africa for a prosperous future should be the main agenda, we must now work to defuse a divisive situation that may lead to irreparable rifts among the nations of our continent. Amnesty International has condemned the xenophobic attacks, while the African Union and governments offer excuses complemented by inaction. The government of Nigeria, along with Nigeria Airlines, is offering free travel home to their citizens caught in the crosshairs of this shameful xenophobic movement that is gripping South Africa. Nations, including Madagascar, Tanzania, Botswana, Zambia, and others have taken concrete steps to rescue their citizens from the barbaric xenophobic fever infecting South Africa. Along with strong economic sanctions, these nations are undertaking rescue operations to bring their citizens home. Meanwhile, the response from the government of Ghana is that they are monitoring the situation. In the typical do-nothing fashion of the NDC and MPP, without a visible profit for them, they will cast our citizens aside. They will not act to protect and rescue our brothers and citizens being attacked in South Africa. Ghanaians flee to countries like South Africa to escape the failures of the government of Ghana. Unemployment in Ghana has become systemic because of the corrupt policies of the NDC and MPP, leaving many no choice but to seek greener pastures elsewhere. 
It crushes my heart to see the outward xenophobic policies of the South Africa become accepted by its citizens. It tears at the fabric of human principles to watch as brothers and sisters of the same continental heritage practice the philosophy of hatred and divisiveness. It is the responsibility of the Ghana government to forcefully speak out at the African Union and demand action, while at the same time implementing a plan of action to bring our Ghanaian brothers and sisters safely back to our homeland. This xenophobic backlash in South Africa shines a gleaming spotlight on the inadequacies of the government of Ghana. We must see to it that Ghana is the land of opportunity for all our citizens. We must replace the failed government with one which understands that it is an obligation to provide the infrastructure, educational framework, medical facilities, agricultural uh, policies, energy initiatives, as well as the social services that provide for our citizens now and in the future. Every Ghanaian should be able to secure a job that will provide the necessities of life in their homeland and ensure the freedom, happiness, and prosperity that they are guaranteed by our national constitution. No citizen should ever have to leave their beloved country to seek employment and opportunity. As a beacon of hope, on the African continent, Ghana deserves a responsive, uncorrupted government that is dedicated to its people. Africa deserves a Ghana filled with freedom, hope, opportunity, and the prosperity to shepherd the continent to a dignified, loving, united continent guided by equality, respect, and the basic elements of human decency. I am Kofi Kuranting. I am Ghana. I am Africa. Thank you.